Now, first of all, I'd like to look at some Spanish greetings and discuss the issue of formality in Spanish. The first one I'd like to look at is the word hola, hola, which looks like hello, but is actually closer to the English word hi. Again, the Spanish H is not pronounced, so it's just hola. Now, you could use hola to greet a friend, a coworker, or a family member. You would probably not want to use hola to greet the public or somebody you didn't know. To greet the public or to greet someone that you would treat in a more polite manner, you would use the expressions buenos dias, good morning, and buenas tardes, good afternoon. Tardes can also be used for evening. If you want to greet someone at night or to retire for the evening, you can say buenas noches which means good night. Now, I want to look at buenos dias and buenas tardes and buenas noches for a second here. The D here is like the TH in brother and this. Not like the TH of thick, but like the TH of brother. It's a little muffled here because it comes after an S, so you don't hear it as much. But it's not buenos dias, it's buenos dias. Buenos dias, you can see me say dias, and it's not like the English D of day. This is an O. Spanish O is always O and never turns into an A sound. So you don't want to say buenos dias, as many people do. It's buenos dias. The reason that it's buenos is because dia is a masculine word. We'll discuss masculine feminine in a later lesson. But that's why it's important because Spanish uh, adjectives agree with the noun they modify that you say buenos because it's not just a pronunciation mistake if you say buenas, you're actually making a mistake in grammar. Look at this word, tardes. Now, we have a trilled R here because it ends the syllable, and then the D here is sort of like, um, this is sort of like the word they with an S at the end, this, tar this, tar this. Now, these combinations of a trilled R and a D are, are tricky for English speakers, so sometimes you have to pick your battles. If you can't say the trilled R with the D right after it right away, then say the D correctly. If you have to say tar this, tar this, tar this, you will be more understood than if you try to say an English D here, tar this. And you will start to approximate the correct Spanish pronunciation. Notice that this is buenas, buenas. The A in Spanish is always A, and it agrees with a feminine word, which tar this is feminine. Noches is also feminine, so you say buenas noches. Now, you don't need to know all about grammar to learn buenos dias and buenas tardes and use them in conversation. The important thing to know is that endings have meaning in languages, and they're, they're important. So you want to learn things when you learn them as exactly and carefully as you can, because later on when you're studying, if you didn't learn the foundation very well, then the rest of the knowledge that you build on top won't be on a very good foundation and your knowledge will be rather shaky. So it starts with just a few words learned well. Now I said I wanted to talk a little bit about formality. Again, hola I use with a close friend, coworker, someone you know. It can, it can be someone uh, that you treat politely as long as it's an acquaintance, somebody you know. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, again, more formal. Same with buenas noches. You can combine the two to make it formal but a little more personal. Hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenas tardes. Now, Spanish has two forms of address that I'll just mention quickly. There is what I call the buddy-buddy form, or in textbooks, the tu form. Tu meaning you, but it's the intimate intimate buddy-buddy, uh, what you would use with a friend, a, a coworker that you've known for a long time. Um, family members, that sort of thing. And then the polite professional form, usted. Again, this is an U sound, and this D is like a TH. Usted, usted. This is the polite professional way to say you. Now, in textbooks, they introduce this is informal and this is formal. The problem is that Americans tend to be informal with everyone, and Latino culture maintains more traditions of respect. So it might be offensive to use tu with a stranger, somebody older than you, or somebody might get the right, wrong idea, think that you thought them a romantic interest, that sort of thing, if you use tu in the inappropriate context. When I teach Spanish that works, 
for people who want to travel, going to be in customer service situations, or for customer service professionals, I only teach the usted form. For one thing, it greatly simplifies the verbs, as the verbs for usted and, and other things, such as the su, which can mean your, his, her, or their, is the same for the he, she form. So you don't have to learn so many conjugations of the verbs. And mostly so that you don't get into trouble and use something inappropriately. You can always go back and acquire the tu form later. It's, it's easy. Mostly you add an S to the verb. So a little note about that. Especially in Latin America, speakers tend to be very polite. And it never hurts. It also never hurts to use these that we discovered or discussed last time. These little words, por favor and de nada, gracias means thanks, por favor means please, and de nada means you're welcome. Literally it means of nothing and it translates as you're welcome. So politeness, words of courtesy, always help in life.